So do y'all have big plans for your Pentecost day? <laughs> it's a big day. It's a holiday. Special day to celebrate. So happy Pentecost. Thank you. Thank you. We need to start a Pentecost tradition of gifts or something. We'll figure it out, though. Uh, the, the best part about Pentecost is that it's, it's one of our three big days during the year as the church. And, you know, there's Christmas, there's Easter, and then there's Pentecost. And without Pentecost, the other two wouldn't be possible for us. Pentecost is just as important for us as the other two because on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit descended upon the people and gave them faith. If it wasn't for the day of Pentecost, none of us would believe that Christmas or Easter were important to us. And so the day of Pentecost is important. And, and my favorite part of the day of Pentecost is like, it's just as important as Christmas and Easter, but we don't have to share it with the rest of the world. We don't have to like, you know, buy Pentecost cards and send them out or, or Pentecost baskets or any of those things. It's just, it's a day for the church to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came upon the believers on that day and never left. Never left. And, and uh, so I decided to read through the book of Acts and look for the words Holy Spirit or Spirit in the book of Acts and find out what the Spirit did for the early church. What, what, how did the people respond to receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit? And uh, there are 21 instances in the book of Acts where the Holy Spirit is mentioned. And many times it just said, and, and Peter began to speak and the people were filled with the Holy Spirit. But in eight of those, right after the people were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak. They began to talk. And as we talk about uh, the, the, the reading from today, the powerful moment of, of, of the very first day of Pentecost was the, the Spirit coming in, in with tongues that looked like flames. And we have flames all over today kind of signifying the Holy Spirit, but really they're tongues that looked like flames. That There's this very real uh, point that the Holy Spirit comes into our lives so that we will speak. So that not just we will speak, because I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I say a lot of unimportant things. My day is filled with a lot of unimportant things. But it is so that we will, the Spirit comes into our lives so that we will speak that which is most important. Did anyone see the royal wedding yesterday? Did anyone get up early just to watch it or did you see like replays? I got up early but forgot why I got up early. And... Um, <laughs> And I turned it on just as it was over. Uh, uh, the, the, the sermon that Bishop Curry gave yesterday, uh, just, I, I just thought it was, it was an amazing sermon, an amazing use of that platform to speak that which is most important, to tell the world that God is love, to preach love. God is love and God calls us to love one another. God calls us to proclaim love. The Holy Spirit comes into our lives so that we can proclaim this message, we can get it right. This most important message, the most important message that has ever been shared on planet Earth, that God is love, that God is love. And the only way that we can proclaim that is by grace, God has sent us the Holy Spirit so that we can uh, understand our God as being a loving God. And so the Holy Spirit comes into our lives first and foremost so that we can speak, so that we can proclaim that God is love, so that with our tongues we can worship our God who is love, so that we can let the world know what God has done and how much God loves us. But there are other places in Acts where it talks about the Holy Spirit. And in one place it says, And the Holy Spirit came on them so that they might see and hear. So that they might see and hear. Now in the text it's basically so that they might see and hear what God is doing in the world. But I, I'm going to take that a little farther. So that we can see and hear what God is doing in the world. So that we can see and hear what God is doing in the lives of those around us. Because so often scripture talks about loving God and loving our neighbor. 
And I think there's a very holy act that we can learn about today from the Holy Spirit, and that is the holy act of listening so that we can see and hear, so that we can learn to listen. It's pretty hard to listen to people, isn't it? It's really hard just to, I mean, really just listen. Because when people are talking, when they're telling you what they're thinking, when they're telling you what they're feeling, when they're telling you about their problems, what do you want to do? You just want to say, oh, let me tell you how to fix it. Let me tell you how to fix your problem. Let me tell you how to make your life better. Let me tell you how to resolve this situation. Let me tell you about somebody I know who went through something similar and something that worked for them. Let me fix your problem. When in reality, a lot of people, they just want somebody who will listen. And it is a holy act to just sit and listen to somebody. To sit and listen to somebody and tell them without saying a word that what you're feeling, what you're thinking is important because you are important. I uh, was working on my house on Friday, doing some things around the house, and I was walking through my garage, and I've got this a bunch of leftover wood from projects standing up. With the, and so I'm walking, and as I'm walking, my arm scrapes against one of the corners of the wood, and so I have this, this little mark here that has been... Uh, uh, gouged into my arm. And so I'm, I'm sitting in my chair later on and, and Caroline brings a book to me. And we've been sitting in my chair and reading books and she sees my arm and she said, Dad, you have a boo-boo. My daughter's too. And I said, yeah, I got it from, uh, I was out in the garage and I walked by this wood and it kind of cut me and I told her the whole story and she looked at me and uh, she said, oh, that hurts me too. And I just, I just wanted to, to just start crying, just the, 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 these tears of, of joy that my daughter has, a, has the ability to understand that our lives together are supposed to be supporting one another. And when we listen to others, what we tell them is whatever you're feeling right now, I know I can't feel it the way you are, but I join you in your suffering. I join you in your pain. I join you in whatever you're going through right now. And I want you to know how important you are to me and how important your feelings are to me. Even even if I think you're wrong. Even if we're not the best of friends. You're still important. The holy act of listening is a gift that the Holy Spirit has given to us. And the last point I want to make today, later on in the text, in Acts, it says, and the the early church grew because they had peace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They had peace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit comes into our lives so that we will proclaim, so that we will listen, but also so that we will be comforted. The very first martyr of the uh, Christian church, Stephen, I believe in Acts chapter 7, is being stoned. And as he's being stoned, he looks up to heaven and looks up to the sky and heaven opens and he sees Jesus. He sees Jesus as he's dying. And as he's dying, he is comforted knowing where he is going and who he will be with. The Spirit comforts those who are dying, but it also comforts us when those around us die, when, 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 when evil strikes, and evil does strike. We've seen it in Santa Fe, Texas, right, just a couple days ago, another shooting, and we can't wrap our mind around it, but somehow we can gather today and sing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. He reigns, not evil. We are comforted by the fact that we know that God has won victory over death and victory over evil for good. Even though there's times in this Romans 8 text from this morning, 826, it is probably the most comforting text in all of scripture for me. The idea that when we pray and we don't know what we ought to say, when we are so broken, when we are so sad, when we are in such a state where we just can't even put a sentence together, 
that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf with sighs too deep for words. I have uh, friends that I met in middle school. I don't have... um, uh, They're probably the only couple I know who met in middle school and got married. And uh, uh, one of the, the, the girls sat next to me uh, and, and all the way through ninth grade. And then I played baseball on the same team as the guy. And they got married right after high school. And they have uh, seven children. And uh, they're Catholic. And, uh, <laughs> and their oldest son, 17 years old, was killed in a car accident yesterday. And I, and I read about it on Facebook. And, uh, and I want to, I read about it this morning uh, and, and I wanted to type, but I just, I just couldn't put the words together. I couldn't put the words together to say what I want to say because I don't know what I want to say. But I'm comforted by the fact that even though I know I'm not there, I'm not there to provide comfort and support right now, I know the Holy Spirit is. I know the Holy Spirit is there with them and in the midst of their shattered lives and in their brokenness where they can't even... They're living in a cloud. They don't even know what to do next. That the Holy Spirit is there praying on their behalf, screaming on their behalf. And the Holy Spirit is in Santa Fe, Texas. And the Holy Spirit is wherever people are hurting right now, doing the job of comforting. We do live in a broken world. And, and over the course of the next weeks, days, months, If you turn on the television, you're going to hear experts or people who claim to be experts tell us what America needs, what America needs to be fixed, to be healed, to be brought back together. And I say America needs the church. America needs the church that is filled with the Spirit and sent forth with the Spirit to take the Spirit into the broken places of the world. The world needs the church to proclaim God's love. The world needs the church to go out to those who are hurting and to listen. And the world needs the church to go out and to comfort. To comfort those who don't have the answers. To comfort those who just can't figure out how they're going to get through the next hour, day, week, month. The world needs the Holy Spirit. And we as the church say, Happy Pentecost because we know that the Spirit is already here. The Spirit is here in this place and everywhere. So we say, Happy Pentecost, because God has given us everything we need. And when we walk out that door after worship, we go out knowing that God goes with us to help us talk, to help us listen, and to help us comfort. Amen.